Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Neville. Some people ask, what does it take to be a nature photographer? I would say patience, persistence, and a little bit of luck. This video is a small look into my last five years focusing on nature photography in the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area. Hopefully the images will inspire you to leave your house, get some fresh air, and look at the world around you. I always say, enjoy life, capture some of it, and it doesn't matter what your choice of camera is, just get out there. I hope you enjoy my journey. The day normally starts picking your site, getting there a half hour before the sun, sun comes up. Now, if you're lucky, you get views like this. Boy, isn't this what we all want to see? when we get up early. Sometimes it works that way and let's just say sometimes not so much. But even when it looks bad it can change really really fast. You get to your site, you look around, you observe what's going on, sit there and soak it all in. Enjoy it. Take a deep breath of air, relax, enjoy the mo a moment, and know you're going to have a great day. You never know what you're going to find. Every day is different. You may see this mute swan day after day after day for a certain period of time, but then things change. You see other birds. You see different birds or the same bird doing something more interesting. And sometimes the bird leaves and all that's left is a little snail and a feather. Now, once the sun comes up over the horizon, the birds, well, they start showing up. The skimmers, the ibis, yeah, lots of ibis and pretty much everything. Depending on the time of year, you may get white pelicans. Wood storks, yeah, late spring, summer, everywhere. Or gansers, of course. Life is all around you. Now, here's a little video. This is what you're gonna see this time of year. This is now in, uh, we're in April, April 18th. So birds have been building nests for a while. And don't think that they just build them, have the babies and feed them and life is good. I mean, they're constantly getting branches, fixing the nest, making it a little bit bigger, making it a little bit more comfortable. They are constantly, constantly working hard. Like I said, you'll have the white pelicans certain times of year, usually late fall through the winter. These are the young, younger brown pelicans. Everybody loves Rosetta Spoonbills. People come from all over to see them. Of course, wood storks abound. And eventually, they settle down. They gather in one spot, sometimes with friends get into small groups, kind of like talk a little bit, okay, see where some water is flooded in area, say hi to some turtles, those are some anhinga, and you got the bufflehead family and friends swimming around, the ibis congregating around an island. Everybody's there to have a good time. Wood duck with some friends, yellow legs. Yeah, they're all just picking some spots, swimming around, eating here or there, having a good time. Group of uh, great blue herons, some white pelicans, once again, 
wood storks are always here as well. Let me hear some more uh, Rosetta Spoonbills. A few more of those. There's the storks there. Bunny storks. Spoonbills are very interesting. I mean, but you have to try to get them in the very early morning light. Uh, any of these birds that have a lot of white in them, you just they just get blown out. It's a lot harder. Uh, don't usually take any pictures past 10 o'clock in the morning. Usually quit at 9, actually. So most of the picture taking for me is between 6.30 in the morning and 9, 9.30 in the morning. Uh, there may be some areas. There's some cormorants there. And here's a video clip of a snowy egret getting some fish early morning but um yeah you might be able to shoot a little later in the day if you find an area that's heavily wooded where it blocks the sun a bit where it doesn't things aren't blown out but typically you're looking at you know that hour before sunrise until 9 30 ish in the morning i tend to be more of a morning person Rather get up early than get home late. That's just how I am anyway. Now in the last video, the bird was just walking around. This particular one decides, well, I'm going to fly from the shady area to the sunny area and just get a fish from each side makes for great video as you can tell <laughs> but hey you know I'm sure there are fish all around it right now but it wants to fly over here check out a different spot grab a quick bite to eat and then sit there for a minute or so and think about things decide what it's gonna do next oh, I'm gonna fly back to the other side Get another fish. Us humans, we're pretty spoiled, you know. If um, there's a great blue with a eel, we get to go to the grocery store. We don't have to hunt for our own food. So if we did, we'd probably all be vegetarians, is what I say. There's a cormorant fighting a fish. It does go down quite well. Here it's running off from one with one because it's getting chased. You can't see it in that shot, but it was running away from a pelican who wanted to steal it. Here's a series of osprey shots. They're very active. At least in my location, you know, more around the uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, 8, 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning time frame. And, you know, they'll get a, they'll get a fish or two and... They're good for a while. And we're not, you know, fortunate where, you know, we have uh, like Mark Smith where he has, you know, ospreys everywhere getting fish. Uh, we might only have C3 or 4 getting fish. This is an interesting shot of a turn trying to catch that fish falling down from the sky. So I haven't quite figured that one out. Turns are one of my favorite birds to photograph. A white pelican with a flounder in its mouth, and everybody's chasing after it. Some kingfisher shots with fish. And some great egrets. And one took it, took it up in the tree because it was getting harassed by some of its friends that wanted to steal it, so it flew up in the tree with the fish. Wood storks being one of the harassers, believe me. And they do love crab. And they rip the legs off and eat. then they eat the body. And ibis do the same thing. Ibis also eat the uh, mudworms, fish. And there's one eating a the crab. There's the crab leg and there's the body sitting in the water, which it'll split in half and eat the rest of it. And hingas have a hard time with certain fish. 
sometimes it's a half hour to get it down you think they're not going to make it and some do suffocate and some do have a problem some birds eat caterpillars there's some another anhinga shot cormorant You can see a few cormorant shots here. And there's a tricolor heron with a shrimp. And of course you have the alligator. They like they like blue crab as well. Now in this case, this one is in a it's a low tide. There's a small area that still has some water in it. All the fish are trapped. And it's having a heyday. It's looking at that crab, but it never did get it. It went back to the fishing. Fishing was good that day. And yes, there are snakes. And there are spiders. And that's a golden silk orb weaver spider. Taking down a wasp, packaging it up for later on. Prothonotary warbler with an insect. Yeah, plenty of food. The skimmer, there's an osprey, it has fish in each talon. And great blue heron, one wants it, one's got it. That's just the way it works. And if you like flipping the fish in the air to get them, some stab it, some flip it. Now birds like to fight, whether it's protecting, protecting a nest, trying to get the food from another bird, protecting their territory, practicing. Some ibis didn't get along here. They decided to have a little bit of a fight. And Snowy Egret going after a tricolor. What else is new? A couple Ibis not getting along. And of course ducks, and they're fighting pretty good because they want that female. Sometimes you get funny photos. I'll tell you, that squirrel is going to take me down. <laughs> Here's some sea foam surrounding that bird. And then, you know, there are more than just birds. You have minks. Yes, these are the same minks that are on mink coats. And you can just imagine how many of those have to be killed and slaughtered to make a mink coat. Pretty sad thing. Very voracious eaters. If you have uh, large groups of them, they can wipe out the fish pretty good. Between them and cormorants, you got to watch out. And it's looking at itself there, reflection, and says, well, I'm going to go in the water, maybe. It's working on it. And there it goes. Swam about 10 feet, popped up. And then did some fishing. But minks are very, very cute animals. Then you have smaller things, the blue crabs, insects, fiddler crabs, and you got turtles. Now, uh, there is something in this picture. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to look for it. And that's that spider. And this is a red wing blackbird. And a wax wing. Some oyster catchers. Bluebirds. And you're going to see a wide assortment of birds here. I'm not going to rattle off every single one. I mean, that's a, a barn swallow and a, another prothonotary warbler. A 
ring billed gall. A kill deer. Don't see those too often down here. But they are interesting. And don't be afraid to shoot in the rain. Love this shot. Go in the rain. You'll find a place where you can be undercover. And if you have a high-end camera, I'm not going to say it's waterproof, but you can shoot in the rain and not get all worried about it. It can handle it. Downy woodpecker. Robin. It's just great to, you know, in this series you're seeing, you know, seeing a lot of small birds. And that's the thing. You have to adapt. When you're a nature photographer, you take what nature gives you. If there aren't any birds at that moment, look for dragonflies. Look for butterflies. Look for small flowers to take pictures of. If the big birds aren't there, then go looking for the small birds. You know, things will change with the tide. And if the water levels are real low, you're going to have an abundance of, of small shorebirds that you're going to be able to take pictures of. But go looking for them. You know, walk through the trails. Lots of times, you know, you have roads going through parks, whatnot. You just walk on the side of the road. You would be amazed what you can find while you're walking on the side of the road. And don't walk continuous. You're trying to get a small bird, you know, walk 100 yards and stop and just stand there in one spot. There's a hummingbird with a bad tongue day. Stop for 10 minutes. Let the birds get used to you being there. Because you, you know they're there. You hear them. You may not see them. You stand in one spot for 5 or 10 minutes. There's a blue jay with a seed in its mouth. And they'll come out, and you'll see them, and you'll get the shot. I mean, they're not standing there. They're not there posing for you. You have to be patient. You have to look for them. You have to be willing to stand in one spot for a while. Let nature come to you. I mean, sometimes you're lucky. It's right in your face. It's right there. You can get it. Sometimes they're cooperative. There's a black-crowned night heron. There's a grackle. Beautiful purple coloration when the light hits it just right. Uh, green heron in a tree. Those are oysters. But the key is, like I said, be persistent. Shoot along the shore to get a shot like that of the great egret. They'll try to find things to stand on. It could be uh, any piece of wood, piling, a stump sticking out of the water. That was an early morning shot. And I guess they uh, practice Buddhism. Everybody loves the spoonbills. People drive in the park, see the photographers with their cameras. They say, any spoonbills? Uh, there is one thing they ask about first, which I will mention in a little while, but spoonbills are, are usually number two on the list. But I'll tell you what number one is in a little bit. Spoonbills are, are great if the light is right, but when the light gets harsh, then you're, then you're out of luck. You can only do so much with post-processing. You got the pelicans, the white pelicans. And don't be afraid to shoot a bird in the sky. You know, some photographers say, oh, a, blue, a bird with a blue background is horrible. Is that horrible? You got the moon in the shot. Sometimes you get perfect lighting going through those wings, and blue sky or not, it looks really good. And I'm not a person that tends to do fake skies in my pictures. I mean, I, I take it as it is, and I deal with it. Uh, some cormorants, wood storks, yeah, the spoonbills are busy, 
There's the snowy with an attitude. Must have seen another bird. Oh, yeah. Let's get the posture going. Let's get ready to rumble. Clapper rail. Many times you see them. I mean, you hear them, but you don't see them. They hide in the in the reeds a lot and the grasses. Tricolor heron. There's our happy snowy. But like I had said earlier, you're not going to go to any one place and capture everything you're seeing here your first day out. I mean, you may only see there's a least bittern. You don't see those too often, at least down here anyway. But uh, you're patient. You wait for Thanksgiving. You get that guy. <laughs> but... Uh, you just have to be patient and you have to come back and some people in my life will say well why do you keep going to the same place all the time well it, it, it's important to go back to uh, places uh, more than once and and actually kind of adopt one as your your base if you want to call it that because you know you you go there often enough you know when certain birds are there you know what the habits are Now's the time of year for the for the babies to be born. Uh, there's the Valentine shot, Valentine card shot there, uh, great blue heron chicks. The great egret bringing some nesting material for mom. So this is a great time of year right now. Uh, unfortunately, whether it be due to avian flu, which is prevalent down here right now, we had a long winter. Um, it was colder than usual. It stayed colder longer than usual. There's some pileated woodpecker chicks. And we don't have the quantity of birds that we've had in the past. There's a couple ospreys, you know, with, with their arm around each other, talking about what they did last night, I guess. Some uh, green heron chicks. Anhinga feeding its babies. Good old American eagle bringing some food to the young adult. Youngsters down below in the nest, the adults up a little higher. Nothing like eagles, I'll tell you. They're just amazing, amazing birds. There's some younger ones. It takes like five years for them to get the white. There's a red-shouldered hawk. And here's a sequence of some barred owl pictures. And this owl is just like a combination of sleeping half the time, relaxing, letting the sun hit it. I'll tell you, they're really, really hard to find, and, and especially if they're, there's a Cooper's Hawk, if their uh, back is, if, the fa if they're not facing you when you walk by them, and they have their back turned, they're very hard to spot. There's an eagle going after an osprey, it has a fish, osprey hitting the water hard here, and then look at slow down because it has a very big fish that it's bringing up. And the eagle getting some nesting material for mama. Where I go, there's only one nesting pair in the particular area I go in, but the the juveniles from, you know, that were born the year before will hang around and sometimes mom and dad have to kind of like shoo them away and say, hey, you're, you're grown up now. That's a northern harrier, which you don't see too often down here. And a sequence of uh, images from uh, my luck with a red-tailed hawk.
like I said, sometimes you get lucky. And this was a, um, a young great horned owl. And Geoining, I guess it's getting tired of the length of this uh, video. <laughs> oh, it's definitely getting tired of the length of this video. That's a Cooper's Hawk. And Young Eagle. But you just have to get out there. You have to be observant. You have to walk a ways. And tell you, all you need, it's, it's kind of like golf. Being a photographer is like being a golfer. Now, here's a, uh, you know, skip ahead here. Here's the number one thing that the kids want to see. They want to see the alligators. Birds, not so much. They come to see the alligators. So the alligator is like the number one. You know, if you're a birder, you're looking for... Um, the painted bunting, which is a small bird. Um, you're looking for the spoonbills. That's that's what birders want to see. And here's that barred owl doing some flying. Now, it hit the ground, and it actually had its wings flat on the ground like it was smothering something, but when it came up, it didn't have anything. So if it saw something, he, didn't, he, didn't, he or she did not get it with the talons, and it was not able to uh, keep it from getting away. That's an adult brown pelican. It has the white head with some yellow in it. See a lot of the youngsters that are all brown, but uh, with some white, but don't see the adults anywhere near as much as the young ones. Ibis. It's a cormorant, early morning light, coming in for a landing. Great egret. The pelican. There's your wood storks flying in. It's nice, the osprey, when you can get it with some white fluffy clouds. I mean, like I said, you take what you get. Nature gives you what it gives you, and, and that's it. You, you make the best of what you can get. And one thing as a nature photographer, especially if you're uh, working with birds a lot, you're going to have a lot of light changes you're going to be dealing with a lot of um you know part of the scene is shade part of the scene is direct sun uh, knowing where to where to stand here's some uh, skimmer shots uh, one of these shots coming up is the uh skimmer coming right at you But you got to be patient. You got to work at it. And I've had enough. So I'm going to go to the beach, take my wife, have her kick off her flip flops, and take a nice stroll. I hope you enjoyed this video.